All right, let's take a look at uh, Chapter 2, and now Programming Project 2. All right. Look at another project here. Here's one. Find the number of years and days. Write a program that prompts the user to enter the minutes, for example, 1 billion, and displays the number of years and days for the minutes. For simplicity, assume a year has 365 days. Here's a sample run. Okay, so what we need to do here is first we're going to take input from the end user about how many minutes they would like to calculate. So given this many minutes, how many years is it and how many days? So we're simply going to type in the prompt, enter the number of minutes, and then we will wait for the user to type it in. In the minutes should be a full number, so we'll make sure that the data type is a full number. Now the next part is calculating the uh, actual uh, years and days. So how are we going to do that? Well, we'll take the minutes that the user uh, provided for us and then we're going to divide it by hours and by minutes. So this is going to tell us how many days there are. And then we're going to take the number uh, of days, divided it by 365, and we'll know how many years is in this number. And then finally, knowing, for example, that it's uh, 100.5, we're going to take the total of days and use that modulo uh, operator to make sure that we can get the remainder, which would be just the days themselves. Now, there is a special operator used, which uh, the book touches on. It is two division uh, slashes instead of just one. Now, what that means is that in, uh, in Python, we, we can um, issue the two division um, symbols to make sure that the floor operation is completed. So, if you have a 10, you divide it by 3, it will be 3.33333. So in this instance, we would like to just have the floor, uh, not the ceiling, but the floor. So what is the bottom line integer in this expression? And so that helps us to um, <clears throat> keep the math within integers. And so once we have these values, we can go ahead and display minutes, the number of years, and the remaining number of days. So uh, to um, take this example here, um, uh, let's see. Let's grab the example and, uh, well, let's do this. We'll grab the example, put it here, and uh, we'll go to uh, execute this program. Here we go. So let's uh, run the program. It's going to prompt us four minutes. We put in the number, and it now calculates it's 1,902 years and 214 days. And so, how would you know how to do that? Well, by asking questions and by uh, taking one sample of code at a time and playing with it and uh, really having a lot of errors before you get to this point. So that's sort of the idea that you, um, you don't know how to write it from scratch, uh, not many people do, and so you just go ahead and play with the numbers until they start to make sense. All right, so this is uh, our uh, project number two. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the next one. So let's come down here, we'll hit submit. All right, so let's look at project number three. Here we're asked, write a program that prompts the user to enter a four-digit integer and displays the number in reverse order. And here's a sample. So we have 5213 and 3125, so backwards display. Now, this uh, can be done by taking the number and then calculate calculating that modulo uh, uh, expression. So let's get us started with the first one. 
All right, so we have a number. We're going to ask the user for the number. We'll make sure that uh, it is not uh, uh, a floating point. It is not uh, a fraction. And what we'll do is we'll take the number and then we'll go ahead and use the modular expression of 10, which means that now we are capturing the last digit. All right, and so that's the last digits, digit in the number. Now, how can we move then to the next digit? Well, what if we divide this entire number by 10? You see, now we will be moving closer to, uh, to the left to, to, to uh, the larger numbers. And so that's what we're doing here in the next line. We're taking the original number, we're dividing it by 10, making sure that the, the, that the um, uh, floor of the calculation is retained, and we'll end up with 521. Now, after having that as 521, we are able then to, uh, to, to see the next one. So really, uh, this particular uh, program is going to do something four times. And of course, we could set this into a pretty function, but um, knowing that uh, we're going to test uh, for numbers that are four digits long, we're going to say that the second number will be calculated here, and this is the third number, and then this is going to be the fourth number. All right, so from here, we just need to print those numbers to the screen. All right, let's do that. Just like that, number one, two, three, and four. Okay, so let's see again how this is going to work. We have five two, five two one three. Let's take uh, our program and let's execute it. We're gonna say run. All right, so five two one three, and first we had five two one three divided uh, by ten, and this is the modulus, so it uh, retained uh, only the last three. Therefore, d one is equal three. Then we took. 5, 2, 1, 3, and we divided it by 10, and so we moved the decimal point to the left, so it was only 521, and we repeated what we did in the first part, and that is we took the 521 modules of 10, ended up being 1, and that's what's displayed here. Is this tricky? Sure it is. It is something that uh, requires a little bit of thought and puzzling, and then with some hints, uh, we, can, we can get to the bottom of it. All right, so that's uh, project number, uh, number. Uh, let's say I think it's three. All right, so let's move along to the next one. Sure, here we go. And project number four. Now we read here, uh, write a, s a program that uh, prompts the user to enter coordinates of two points, x and y, and then x2, y2, and displays the slope of the line that connects two points. And the formula of the slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Here is a sample run. So in this instance, we're going to uh, get one, two, three, four numbers, and we'll plug in those numbers into an equation and then display the slope. So this uh, particular program is going to be uh, straightforward in that uh, the formula is already given to us. And so first we're going to ask for the x1 number. Now we're going to ask for the number, we will allow it to be a fraction because as we can see, uh, fractions are being entered. And the first four lines simply collect that from the end user. Give me number one, number two, number three, number four. From here, we're creating a variable called slope, and this is the formula that's already given to us uh, in, our, um, in, in our system. Now, notice that uh, in the formula he here, I have x uh, or y1 minus um, y2, here it actually says y2 minus y1. It, the only difference is um, in, in what uh, sequence we're entering the numbers, okay? Because we uh, are entering the numbers here, x1, uh, y1, uh, these are going to be 
um, the, the initial numbers. But really when it comes to the angle that, that these triangle forms uh, form, uh, this would not make a difference. All right, so we then say the slope for the line that connects the two points is, and so uh, we have point one and point two, and then the slope that's generated. All right, let's take a quick look to see how this is going to execute. So we'll go ahead and run it, and uh, we'll specify 4.5 in the first one, minus 5.5 in the, in the uh, second, 6.6, uh, .6 and minus 6.5. All right, and so the slope ends up being uh, a, a rather uh, complex uh, fraction, uh, but that's the slope that, uh, that, that we have uh, available as an answer. Okay. So this is our project, um, project four. Go ahead and submit it. And let's go next and to the last one. Now the fifth project, uh, it says, uh, write a program that reads an investment amount, the annual interest and the number of years, and then displays the future investment value using the following formula. Okay, so in this particular program, uh, not only do we need to read uh, the, the description, but then also it's important to look at the test run as far as the formatting of the numbers uh, and just to understand really what this number is about. So we're going to ask user for an investment amount. Let's say you are willing to put $1,000 towards some kind of a investment. Maybe you're buying Bitcoin. Okay. If we know that the annual interest rate is 4.25, now for Bitcoin, that would be close to 400%. Uh, but if you're just investing in, uh, in stocks, 4.25% is not bad. But the way it's entered is 4.25, right? So it's not 0 0.0425, which is an actual value of percentage. So we're going to have to be dividing by some hundreds here to get this to work correctly. Right, because 4.25% is actually a fraction. 4.25 is, uh, is a float uh, that has more than one in the value. Okay, so that's what we'll work with. We'll work with description and then also this, uh, this input. So we're going to ask to enter a couple of uh, variables, investment amount. And uh, we know the names of the variables because they were given here in the formula. So we're going to go ahead and ask the user Hey, make sure to enter a value, maybe even prompt them with a little um, suggestion, and we will make it into a float, meaning we allow this to be a fraction. And we know to do that because here the user is entering a fraction. Now next, annual interest rate. Again, this is just something that the user will enter, and we also allow that to be a float or a fraction. And now we're going to first calculate the monthly interest rate. Okay, because the user entered annual interest rate, to get it to a monthly interest rate, what we have to do is divide it by 12. And so first we divide it by 12, but then because the user typed in 4.25, we also have to divide that by 100. And so here you can just divide it by uh, um, 1200 like this, or you can go one step at a time and say, divided by 12 and then divided by 100. Because when we start to calculate things, we really need this to be the correct type of a fraction and not sort of a verbal expression of what a percentage uh, interest is. All right, so now that we have the monthly interest, we are going to need the number of years and that's what the user is entering here. Now notice that for the number of years, we make sure that uh, what we retain are the main numbers, the integers. Okay, so here we have the key formula, which is actually given to us. So we don't have to, uh, you know, be a finance uh, officers to, to try to figure this out. The function is already given to us. So we'll just write it out. That the investment account or amount is the monthly interest. So it's that small fraction that is added every month. Now, what we ended up with was annual interest, so that's what we have to divide it in. And then we're going to um, do, uh, uh, we're going to multiply it 
by number of years um, times 12 because there are 12 months in each year and because this is a monthly interest we have to we have to uh, do that and so notice that uh, this is uh, to the power of right the caret sign and so we can do to the power of with this syntax in uh, Python and all we're going to do at the end is we're going to say let's print out this value all right I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, run this code just to see uh, what happens so we run the code and uh, we are first uh, asked to enter a thousand and fifty six then 425 for the annual interest rate in one year and when we display it notice that it says the future value is 1004 with a long number if we look back at the example notice that they provided us with a 1043 comma uh, 92 all right so what we will do here is we're going to have to massage this future value so that it's not such a lengthy float number how are we going to do that well, what if we first multiply it by 100, and what that allows us to do is to take now this number, 1043.92, as an integer. So now that is going to be the main number we're interested in. And we'll do that by putting it in parentheses like so. So what we did so far is we took this very long number and we only specified two significant digits by multiplying by 100 and then made into integer all right uh, so just for fun of it i'm going to go ahead and execute it uh, once uh, more just to show you what this formatting looks like so we have it at 425 one year and so notice that this is an entire integer but it carries the dot 92 that we wanted to and so in order to make it back into its original value all we have to do is just divide that by 100 again. And so the resulting number will be 10043.92. So we'll go ahead and, and, and check that that is the case. And so notice that the formatting came out OK. So that's the trick here with dividing by uh, 100 right after multiplying by 100. Then the 12 and a 100 means 12 months, and this happens to be a fraction, a percentage, so we divide it by 100. And here we multiply number of years by 12 because we're looking at a monthly interest rate. All right, so this was uh, the, the project. We'll go ahead and uh, go back in to, uh, to go ahead and submit it. All right. Well, I hope you're having fun with this like I do, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.